I would like to welcome everybody again to meet the Maker Series at Arlington Heights Memorial Library. We are delighted to uh, uh, welcome you to join us tonight. My name is Carol Ng, he exhibits coordinator at the library, and I'm one of the planners who organized the program series. This is our last of the six events for 2020, introducing you to the possibilities of making. You can make uh, or you can find details about the full series and meet all of our makers at um, our website. So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce you to my colleague and our host, Chris Kruger, Makerspace Branch Assistant Manager. Chris, please take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, as Carol said, my name is Chris Kruger. I am the Makerspace Branch Assistant Manager here at the library. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to visit a makerspace at one of the local libraries in the area that has one, or you're just not really familiar with the concept, I thought I'd give you a little brief overview before we get started. Um, a makerspace is a collaborative workspace. It's a place to spread out and work on a project if you don't have that kind of space at home. It's a place to use tools and equipment that you might not normally have access to. Uh, it's a place to network and meet with fellow makers in your own community. And it's a place to learn new skills and talents. At the library's makerspace, we're going to have some really exciting technology and equipment available for things like laser cutting, 3D printing, uh, CNC milling, embroidery, as well as classes on art, cooking, sewing, and more. So if you'd like more information about our makerspace opening in 2021, and I really hope you do, you can check out the makerspace page on our website at ahml.info slash makerspace. I'm going to drop that into the chat if you'd like to follow up on that. That's where we're going to be posting updates and pictures as they come up. Uh, and now about this Meet the Maker series. This series is, uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. Like Carol said, this is our sixth meeting. Uh, it's a series that explores different ideas and their interpretations of what making is. We're really fortunate to have makers from around the Chicagoland area that want to share their passions and interests with us. And we've seen some really interesting stuff so far. Uh, a lot of that you can check out on our website that we have archived in uh, YouTube or Instagram Live events. And I think this series is special because it lets us connect with a really interesting group of makers with a really diverse skill set. Um, you know, from artists to designers, craftsmen, and hobbyists, the maker community really covers a lot of ground as far as who considers themselves to be a maker and what it is they like to make. Uh, the makers in this series have covered quite a few mediums like textiles, screen printing, mold making, beadwork, glass art, and more. Uh, and like I said, those videos are available on our website. So I hope you find some inspiration from today's program. Um, I think this series is a lot of fun, not only because we get to see these makers work and talk about their passions, but it also gives us an opportunity to reach out and ask questions to the artists and makers. So make sure you do, make sure you drop questions in the chat today. Um, this is a great opportunity that, you know, we might not always have. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce today's featured maker, William Estrada. William is an arts educator and multi multidisciplinary <laughs> multidisciplinary artist. His art and teaching is a collaborative discourse that critically re-examines public and private spaces with people to engage in radical imagination. He has presented in various panels regarding community programming, arts integration, and social justice curricula. He is currently a visual arts teacher at Telpuk Kali Elementary and a faculty of the art school, the School of Art and Art History at the University of Chicago. Uh, I'm sorry, the University of Illinois at Chicago. This, uh, William is engaging in collaborative work with the Mobilized Creative Collaborative, Chicago ACT Collective, and Just Seeds Artist Cooperative. His current research is focused in developing community-based and culturally relevant projects that center power structures of race, economy, and cultural access in contested spaces that provide a space to collectively imagine just futures. So with that, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you, William. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate it. Uh, hi everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone's had a good day and a good week so far. Thank you all for joining me in the Meet the Makers uh, here at uh, Arlington Heights uh, Memorial Library. Um, my presentation today is going to be like in three parts. Uh, the first one is I ended up recording a video of my arts practice and a little bit of the process that I go through here in my home studio um, to show you how I do screen printing. The second part is doing just a really, really quick tutorial on lettering 
and how I usually end up teaching lettering to children of all ages and all heights. Um, and then the third one is going to be, uh, I'm gonna be asking you all to think about um, what empathy looks like in action. Um, and then I will take one of those comments and then turn it into a quick uh, poster, okay? Um, and then I'll kind of show you my process and think through the process of what it is that I um, think about as I'm designing these posters, um, but then also invite you all to create a poster with me. And my hope is that, you know, you will email me that poster and then we'll highlight it in the Arlington Heights um, Memorial um, Instagram. And then of course, in my own social media as well with your permission, of course. So um, here, let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen and show this video. And if you all have any questions about the presentation, I will be um, answering questions via the chat. So feel free to post those questions and here it goes. I'm gonna mute myself just to give you a heads up, okay? Hello everyone, my name is William Estrada. I am here as part of the Meet the Maker series at Arlington Heights Memorial Library. Thank you for joining us. I'm gonna be talking a little bit about my teaching and how my teaching has influenced the design process. When I usually teach um, uh, pre-K through elementary at Little Village in Chicago, I work at a Chicago public school called the Pochicali. And at the Pochicali, our focus is to teach dual language. So I teach Spanish uh, art. Um, and one of the things that I've been focusing on has really been thinking about how do we use uh, cultural images or cultural iconography in order to think about how we are represented as a peoples, how our stories are represented, what is celebrated. Um, and a lot of the pieces that I ended up focusing on is really thinking about cultural icons, right? Like this is uh, La Rosa from La Loteria, which is a, a family game that people usually play. Um, I worked for an organization called ART, Our Resources in Teaching. And along with Kaya Overstreet, we designed um, posters in early 2009, 2010 where we started thinking about creating prompts for the community for the students to answer. So this was a project that we ended up um, creating in um, the Austin neighborhood, which is in uh, the west side of Chicago. And we really focused on thinking, you know, what kind of questions students wanted to answer. So this is uh, a prompt and this is one of the very early on images where we, you know, I started using prompts as a way to uh, engage people in conversations. At the Pochcali again, you know, I really um, been having these conversations with students and art teachers and the uh, teachers and that, that teach academic content around invisible labor and thinking about, you know, whose work is honored within our communities and whose work isn't. So we have been looking at contemporary artist practices just like Frida Kahlo, uh, Kahin De Wiley, you know, and thinking about what would it mean for us to put the images of people in our neighborhood as heroes, right? As um, now that we're talking about essential workers, the fact that it's the essential workers that make the economy run, right? But they're not paid, right? Um, the necessary uh, amount of money, you know, based on the labor and the necessity of their labor. Right, so this was a particularly piece where we started focusing on thinking about the jobs that exist in our, you know, brown and black neighborhoods and thinking about um, the fact that, you know, these essential workers that are essential year round, right, also become invisible because there are, they are providing labor that we don't always see and that we don't always appreciate. So, um, a lot of the pieces that we've been looking at too is really thinking about, you know, how do we use artwork in order to engage in hard conversations about race, segregation, um, stereotypes. And this particular piece, we were looking at Kara Walker and really thinking about the layers of text. Uh, the lines are supposed to represent the 
um, maps of, of Austin and then the people itself, right? Uh, thinking about you being able to put yourself in this position and students were asked, fourth grade students were asked to um, think about a time that they had been stereotyped because of the way they looked, uh, because of their gender, you know, because of their race um, and recollect those ideas and really thinking about image theater and um, theater of the oppressed practices, we really started to transform this situation and changed it into a solution, right? But we're constantly thinking about these particular pieces and how do we end up using text and imagery together to start addressing uh, real concerns that are affecting our neighbors, that are affecting us. Um, and also, what are some of the conversations that are, aren't happening, right? What are the conversations that are not being had in our neighborhoods? Uh, and specifically thinking about the multiple reasons why people migrate to the United States. What effects does U.S. policy have on uh, Latin American countries and countries around the world and how those policies um, disturb the peace in those countries and force people to leave them, right? Um, but a lot of the pieces that we've been really thinking about have really thought about the design concepts behind these images and really thinking about using text and imagery as a way to address the most urgent um, conversations in our neighborhood. So part of the conversation today is really gonna think about making statements around empathy, making statements around things that you need to work on for yourself in order to create change in your neighborhood and how does that change affect everyone else right um what are the things that we need to uh create things that we need to reimagine in order to 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 learn right as this image says create imagine learn um for us to like create different systems that don't rely on the oppression of of other folks uh, and also, you know, like how do we take these images to to make um, statements that are are valid and statements that are you know going to reach across uh, different populations? Um, I think when we're thinking about the designs themselves, you know, we want to keep um, keep them simple, right? We don't have tons of time today to design something super complicated, but I think the you know I'm predominantly more interested in the ideas behind the designs. You know, um, the designs, you know, take time and take uh, energy. Um, and I think part of it is for us to really think about how are we using these cultural symbols? Who do these cultural symbol symbols belong to? And really, you know, thinking about the fact that we are, we can only talk from our own personal experience. So really thinking about the things that we want to change in ourselves, the things that we are willing to work on in order to make um, our neighborhood, our city, our, you know, our nation, you know, a much better place, right? So how is it that we are creating these conversations in order to not erase other people's experiences and not this... Um, not this uh disassociate ourselves from other people's experiences right so our experiences are on their own and making sure that the work that we are doing the designs that we are creating um don't say you know that we're gonna that other stories are not important right uh, and very much like this student design right like thinking about not erasing other people's experiences or belittling them now, because I was teaching, I really started thinking about the mobile street art card, and these are some of the pieces that uh, I started generating as part of my work, and these are some of the current art projects that I do. Now, the mobile street art card was meant to honor the mobile vendors that I grew up with, uh, both in Mexico and in a little village here in Chicago and across the city of Chicago, right? We had ice cream carts. Um, I ended up working with Adrián Celaya, which is an artist, uh, um, 
you know, right now he does a lot of uh, carpentry and a lot of uh, um, construction work. And we worked together for a period of a little bit over, over you know, six, seven months in order to generate a, a cart that he could both build and that, you know, kind of met the things that I was interested in, in having. Um, and through this process, you know, we really started thinking about, you know, creating these spaces um, out in the world, right? Um, I started using the cart as a way to create designs that were easy to replicate through screen printing, buttons, um, screen printing on, on t-shirts, paper, tote bags. Um, but there were also kind of prompts that people would be able to color and respond to and then take on their own, right? It was these constant collaborations around ideas about what does it mean for us to represent ourselves? What does it mean for us to you know, encounter and have these discussions as to why schools are being closed in our neighborhoods and how that destabilizes our community. Now, these are, we've had conversations around gentrification, right? We've had conversations around the misrepresentation of our stories. And if you notice, a lot of the designs are really, um, you know, text heavy, right? There's a lot of words in it. Uh, but again, you know, the, the idea is for the designs to be simple. Um, you know, sometimes I really like treating the designs as a coloring book. And one of the questions that I always have is, what are the intersections, right, of different ideas and different movements in this work in order for us to engage in lar larger conversations around what it means for us to... Uh, you know, work collaboratively to represent ideas that are already existing in our neighborhood. <clears throat> a lot of these pieces are really meant to think about who you are, right? Hearing people's stories and thinking about the aspects of community building. Now, the Radical Print Shop is very much very similar to the mobile street art card, but this usually takes in the take place in the winter months uh, because I can't be out in the neighborhood. And very much like the makerspace here at Arlington Heights Memorial Library, uh, one of the things is about you know inviting people to come together and sharing design practices and sharing techniques uh, and and creating right um, the radical. Print Shop project is really designed to invite community organizers and people that are interested in community organizing uh, in thinking about what it means for us to come together as artists, as organizers, as activists, as teachers, as students, as community members, and use art as a, you know, as a grounding right, for conversations and for community building. And a lot of these pieces are really meant for folks to, um, yeah, I mean, come together and, and, and design around people-led movements, right? So this is a, a big piece of, of the work that I'm interested in doing. And, and, you know, I'm particularly excited about having the makerspace open and having, you know, access to the space for a larger public. Now, I belong to three different collectives. The Chicago Art Collective is a group of about 15 of us. You know, we um, create different designs for grassroots movements here in Chicago in the Chicagoland area. And a lot of the discussion is, again, you know, thinking about how do we use design and, and art making as a way to inform a larger public around the needs of particular communities, but also uh, the power of images in their use to attract people that are affected by the, um, by the things that we're, we're designing for or against, uh, but also in thinking about how do we move out from our studio spaces and our the institutions that we work with uh, into the streets. Now, the Mobilized Creative Collaborative does very much the similar thing, but, you know, Akil Charleston, which uh, runs the Mobile Music Box, uh, really uses music as a democratic space to um, 
really rethink about reusable, um, reusable, uh, using reusable or recyclable um, materials in order to create music and how music brings people together. And then the Franken Toymobile, which is um, Andres Lemes Spahn and Mario Spahn Lemes, uh, which is now like the sound machine, the drum machine, you know, they're, they're kind of in transition space. Um, you know, really use uh, different sound, different making as a way to uh, democratize the aspects of art making, right? And this is all of us here. This is like the drum machine, sound machine um, that Andres um, Lemes Spahn and uh, Maria Spahn Lemes created. And, you know, a lot of the, you know, we end up collaborating with the Chicago Park Districts and through the night out in the parks in order to go out into Chicago parks during summer months. And then the last collective is the Just Seeds Artist Cooperative, which is a, which I'm a new member of. Um, and I really would recommend to visit their site and look at all the amazing work that artists have been generating for, you know, the last two decades, right? Um, and really thinking about the, the thematic the thematics that unify a lot of the work that is being generated, but also a lot of the interviews that the artists end up giving as a way to uh, explain, right? And, and think about the intersections of their work in these movements and also the importance of image making in uh, organizing and in centering art as a democratic tool to explain and amplify and educate and um really bring people together in these fights right and these are a couple of different designs that i ended up creating as part of uh my work with uh, the just seats artist cooperative and i'll leave you with this last image here thank you we'll move on to um looking at screen printing as a process of how we use that or how i use it in order to generate these images. The first step in preparing the, scheme, the screen is to coat it with a photo emulsion. There's various ways of doing screen printing. I usually focus on photo emulsion process, but what you do is you coat the screen with this photo emulsion and then you let it dry. I don't have access to a dark room in my home studio, so I use a cardboard box. I usually put a black tarp on top of the box to make it light tight. When the photo emulsion is drying, it needs to be in a completely dark space, and this is what I use. Once your design is ready and your screens have fully dried, I burn the screen. What I usually do is I put a glass on top of the design to hold it down and I use an incandescent light in order to burn the image or my design onto the photo emulsion screen. Once I've exposed my design, I wash out the screen, revealing the design by introducing warm or cold water onto the design and removing any excess photo emulsion. Once this is done, I need to let my screen fully dry. Once my screen is dry, I can begin preparing the screen to print. In this case, I'm putting some tape around the edges so my ink doesn't flow out. Once my screen is ready, I can start pulling prints. In this case, I've registered the paper, so my design is right in the middle of the paper that I'm using. I tried different colors in order to play around with the color in the design, knowing that I'm going to add a second layer of color for this particular print. Once you're done with this process, you can take your screen and wash it out removing all the excess ink and letting it dry so you can reuse it for a second run.
All right, everyone, thank you so much. That was the end of the video presentation. So now we're gonna move into, um, I'm gonna be sharing my um, document camera. I'm gonna be showing you usually the way I think about um, when I'm actually doing lettering. Um, in, so this was the interactive part, right? I was hoping that you all would be able to join me in making a poster as well. Um, I have um, just my, my paper. I was practicing before getting on here, you know, to, to think about just in case I didn't get any prompts. Um, my prompt for today was gonna be love is an action. Um, I was thinking about, um, you know, when Carol, Chris, David, and I met last time, we were talking about a prompt. Usually when I go out into neighborhoods, there's a prompt that I um, ask folks that are engaging in the work that I'm trying to do to think more critically, right, about our own intention and our responsibility in creating the change that we wanna see in our neighborhoods. Um, and the prompt for this was really thinking about empathy, right? Like what does empathy mean to you? And what does empathy look like in action, right? So for me, I was gonna use the word um, love is an action or love is a, ver a verb, right? Like, which I know like uh, folks have seen it out on in the Instagram world. Um, but usually what I do is, let me share my screen here. So if everyone could participate and write on the chat what empathy looks like to you, and then what I'll do is I will show my camera here and kind of go through the process of how I think about lettering. So um, when I'm usually working with lettering and I'm doing hand lettering, um, I prefer using a lot of text when I'm doing screen printing. Um, and the reason why I like using text is because, you know, I like being very direct. It's easy to um, engage folks, you know, language is important as well, right? Um, and one of the things that I particularly enjoy about um, doing text is that, um, we can definitely, you know, think about how language is being used, right, to engage folks. Um, and so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna, you know, I usually end up doing my marking for my letters. So I'm gonna be using the word love, right? And if you can kind of see, I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of playing around with this, I'm not being very, very careful when I'm doing the lettering as many of you may or may not know, right? Like you wanna start light so I can, um, so you can make sure that if you don't like it, you can erase it. I'm a big believer in erasing. Um, although, you know, sometimes making the mistakes um, allows us to kind of play, right? So I'm gonna be doing the word love. So what I usually do is once I do my, my line, my mark, I usually go back and start thinking about the words themselves, right? So you can kind of start seeing my, the word love here, you know, and I slowly go in to make my lines. If you notice, I'm not trying to be super precious with this. I'm gonna do another, another love. This time I'm gonna make my lines a little bit. Right, you know, love has four letters. I'm gonna make my lines a little bit thicker here. I like my, my letters to be blocky. You know, and it's like, um, it's one thing that I've learned, you know, about myself that when I'm doing my, my letters themselves, I usually love them a little bit more blocky and, you know, clean. So um, we can kind of see here, now that I know that I kind of, you know, that I'm enjoying this process here, that I do enjoy the playfulness of the, of the letters. 
kind of see I'm playing around with a perspective here. Right, not completely perfect, but oh, I think this is going to be the winner here. I'm going to choose. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of like playing around with the flow depending on what I want. And I kind of, I really like this one out of the three, right? So one, two, three, like the third one the most. And now that I kind of like it, um, I can kind of go in to make it a little bit, a little bit darker here. So, you know, I'm a kid, I'm a kid from the, I was born in 1977, so I grew up in the in the 80s and early 90s. So graffiti, graffiti had a big influence on my upbringing, you know, and a lot of this lettering, a lot of the text, I honestly think it's because of all the graffiti in the in the city, right? Um, and now what I personally like is, you know, the paper that you're using also makes a big impact on your lettering. So, you know, this is actually a sulfur, a sulfite, I'm sorry, sulfite paper from um, from Blick. And it's like the student, student grade. I usually buy it in bulk of like 500, which is super cheap. It's like maybe like about 19, 18 dollars for like 500 sheets. It's all um, like 13, no, is it 11 by 17 or 12, 12 by 18, something like that. Um, but I love it because I use it for printing, I use it for drawing, I use it for different um, projects. But as you can see, you know, it's pretty, it's a bit easier, right, to like play around with, um, to really playful, right, like to think about like the different lettering. But the biggest thing with the lettering is that you have to kind of play with it, right? Like you have to play with it in order for, um, for you to start feeling comfortable with it. Um, so thank you, Jill, so much. Janet, thank you for sharing, uh, for sharing, sharing feelings, right? Um, these are really amazing. Um, so I think, oh, CMK, thank you, you are loved. So I think, you know, if we're thinking about our, our poster itself, um, actually, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see the whole sheet here. I'm actually going to break it up and let's see, sharing feelings. So I'm going to write love is an action. So I'll put, so the word love will go here. Love is an action. I'll play around with that a little bit. This might be a little bit too. So love, I know love is four words. I definitely, uh, when I'm doing this, I definitely need to count my, my words, my letters, to make sure that it fits, because I run into problems where I start writing and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm like running out of space, right? So, and I want this to be a little bit more, make it a little bit more kitschy, a little bit more playful and add a little heart there. I am a big, I actually really love hearts. You know, they're a little cheesy and I'm constantly telling my elementary age students not to draw them, but it's only secretly because I love them so much. Um, so here I'm like just kind of working, seeing how this is going to look. And then later on, if I like it, I may actually end up changing that E. Um, if I like it, then I'll kind of go in later on and change it. Right? So I like using a lot of capital letters or all uppercase letters. Um, I know my colleagues at the Bochkali are constantly 
reminding me that, you know, I need to use capital and lowercase letters. Um, Cause then students will tell them, it's like, oh, but Maestro William writes in all capital letters, you know? So it's a choice, right? Like if you, if you're interested in doing this, like completely loving this ass, but I'm gonna keep it like this for right now. Um, let me make that in here. I'm gonna play along with this a little bit more. But um, while we're doing this, if you all have any questions about my work or the process, please also let me, like, feel free to write it in the chat. Um, and I can try and answer it. And try and answer any questions that people might have. I have one for you, William from, uh, from the chat. Mm -hmm. How did you decide on screen printing over other media? Um, I, you know, screen printing was something that I fell in love with because it was so, it seems complicated, but it's actually really, it's a lot easier, right? And, and it's a material that I could generate um, a lot of ideas pretty quickly and get them out um, within, sometimes within hours or within at least a day, right? So I was able to make an image, make a graphic, um, burn it, and then literally be screen printing it later on in the day out in the street, if not um, definitely the, the following day. Um, so that was one of the things that really, that really um, enticed me and something that was, that was very, um, you know, that made screen printing like so much, so accessible to me. You know, and I mean, that was like definitely the first, the first thing that attracted me to screen printing. Is there any other questions? Here's one for you. Uh, who is another Chicago designer that we should all know about and watch? Oh, a designer. Um, let's see. I mean, Sam Kirk is am is amazing. You know, um, Gray Gray Rosa, um, Monica Trinidad. Um, who else? Who else can can I think of right now? You know, I'm I'm a big fan of Gray Rosa's work. Um, again, you know, I they end up using a lot of like cultural iconography, um, you know, and and kind of re, like reimagining imagining it through a contemporary lens. Um, um, oh, what's the other artist's name? Uh, Molly Costello makes a lot of like uh, paper cut images around social justice. Um, I really love their their work as well. Um, who else is doing? Who else is doing some other pieces? Those are the ones that I can think of right now. I know. Um, it sometimes takes me a little while to like remember, like all the artist names. Um, but those are those are definitely you know folks that I look at. When I when I want to get inspired, that's great. Thank you. Um, another question for you. So, I, and I imagine a lot of people here are uh, maybe not proficient in screen printing. I know I am not, um, mm -hmm. but very interested. Are there any sites or tutorials that you'd recommend for people new to uh, you know the art form and the process? Um. You know what? I haven't found. I mean, I haven't gotten like YouTube or anything to um, 
to see any sites just because th there's so many different nuances to the equipment that you're using. Um, but what I would say is, you know, definitely, obviously, you know, once uh, the maker space is set up at the um, Arlington Heights Memorial Library, right? Like having that space to kind of play around. Um, Spudnik Press is another place where they offer like workshops uh, and the Hyde Park Art Center, I know are the, are the different places where um, like they usually offer workshops or they, you know, they do like open studios for people to learn how to screen print. Um, but as far as YouTube or, you know, any space like that, like I, I haven't really, there's been a couple of times where I do search things up, but there's, again, there's like different nuances, right? Cause like depending on the photo emulsion that people are using, but, um, but I would definitely say, you know, whatever, whatever, whether you choose to do photo emulsion or whether, whether you choose to do, um, like a filament or whether you choose to do like more like stenciling whatever you do like try and play around with one for a little while before moving on to trying something else just so you can get a feel for the material and the um, the the different things that you might be able to do with it right like the variations that you might be able to do with it because every single process just like anything right like every single process has its uh, benefits and its and its limitations. Um, you know, like I know for me in, in using the photo emulsion process, especially in the way that I have my setup, you know, like I'm not able to do super, super detailed work. Um, so, you know, I, you know, which I'm assuming that at the makerspace you'll be able to do because you'll actually have a, an exposure unit, you know, but I think to do things in your home, in your home studio, at, you know, at a pretty cheap rate, um, you know, you can kind of play around with some of the, those processes. Great, thank you. Like this is what I was talking about, running out of space here. You see this? I'm gonna have to erase all this to make a little more space. Does anybody have any questions or anything else? Or pretty. No, well, we, we got questions hundreds. for you, William. No problem. We um, got plenty <laughs> questions. I'm not, I'm um, not able to see the. I'm not able to see the questions on my end. That's why I'm like. I'm like. I don't know if it's anybody. No, we're, we're, we're keeping track of them for you. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So do you have any upcoming projects you're currently working on? Anything you're excited about? You'd like to talk about? Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm right now. Yes, there's there's a couple of different projects coming up. I don't I don't think they're public yet. So I think the their announcements will be made in January, you know, about some upcoming things that are are that I'm working on. I'm looking forward to, especially for the 2021 year. Um, I mean, right now, definitely Just Seeds is doing um, a printmaking portfolio that folks should check out. You know, it's it's on the Just Seeds website. Um, you know, let's see, the, um, you know, the Radical Print Shop is going to be moving into a new space in January. So we'll be able to do some screen printing during the pandemic times. And hopefully, you know, we'll be able to collaborate with some folks in a socially distance or if not, just completely virtual way. Um, you know, right now I'm also... You know, and because of the pandemic, I started this uh, Arte with Maestro William, like YouTube series. Um, so I'm going to be, I'm actually going to be doing some screen printing and printmaking videos on how to do uh, printmaking and screen printing at home, um, you know, with, with accessible, um, you know, which will, you know, hopefully it's going to be, it's going to be geared towards like folks that are, you know, that are, are really interested in doing like DIY setups, you know, um, and like makeshift um, like exposure units. So 
you know, so look for that. But that that will happen more towards like late January, if not in, in February. But those are the two things that I can think of or the three things that I can think of right now. Do you uh, do you offer any kind of private lessons for for learning the process? Uh, no, unfortunately, I I don't. Um, I just don't have the I just don't have the capacity. You know, um, you sound as, like a pretty busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as as you know, I you know as as a teacher, you know, like I don't. Yeah, I just I mean, I teach all the time, and just unfortunately. I just don't have the capacity to do like small, um, like one-on-one -on -one workshops. Although, you know, um, I usually do, you know, as part of the residencies and like as part of the, as part of the, um, the radical print shop, like we always have like open sessions, like open studio where we invite folks to like come in and like learn with us. It's not like a structured learning environment, you know, but it's usually like, oh, we have, we're working on these designs, you know, so we're going to burn, we're going to burn the, the designs onto these screens. So we'll walk people through the process, but we're usually, we're usually learning by collaborating with others on other people's designs or organizations, if that makes, if that makes sense. Um, so... So yeah, I mean, th that's like kind of like as individual as I get right now outside of, you know, teaching, you know, if you're, if you're a student at UIC, you know, I, I do a, a print shop, a collaborative resistance print shop project. That's a class and we work with community organizations to, um, to, to develop projects in collaboration with organization that we're partnering up with. Um, Oh, you know what? The other thing too that we're going to be that I'm going to be working on right now is I'm collaborating with a Little Village Environmental Justice Organization in Little Village to um, design a coloring book. Um, we're going to be inviting local artists to contribute images around environmental justice, uh, specifically focusing on like air quality and uh, brown sites in Chicago, um, and thinking about how do we engage in discussions with the larger public on the importance of environmental justice in, in, in our neighborhoods. So, and again, like that, that'll be, you know, that's, that'll be, that's being organized right now. And, and, you know, we'll, it'll be a little bit more public in the next like couple of weeks or so. I have a question here for you. Uh, what is your advice on making and designing and collaboration with other people and organizations? Um, I mean, I think one thing is, you know, definitely, you know, engage in conversations. Um, I think um, as an artist, right? Um, knowing knowing what your what your capacity is like what your bandwidth is right uh definitely making sure that you don't over promise things that you may not be able to deliver um you know also you know showing up with like an open heart right and saying like hey this is this is why i want to do this right uh i think you know it's really important for you to be transparent and 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 what you're able to do and what you can't do. Um, and then as an organization, um, I think it's really important to also ask about budgets, right? Like what the budget of the organization is. You know, um, I know for, for me and the work that I do, um, although all the workshops that I do, all the projects are free, um, I still, you know, not, not only, not just because it's free should organizations assume that it's free, right? Uh, it's free to the public. It's free to people that are engaging with the work, you know, but organizations should be thinking about budgets on how to support local artists, right? Because I think it's also really important for, um, for us to support local, local artists doing, doing their work. Um, 
but I think those are those are some of the things you know and that we should be thinking about whether you're you're an artist or an organization um and obviously you know like thinking about timelines and you know what are the the liberal goals right like what is it what is it that you can create in the amount of time that you have um and then also what are the things that the organization is interested in in generating you know as part of you know, whatever campaign they may be working on. I hope I hope that was was clear. And mm-hmm. let me know if, if you need more clarification on that. No, that was great. Um, I have another question for you if you have time. Um, I'm not sure if you're moving on to the next step here or not. No, no, go ahead. Okay, uh, great. This is a great one from the chat uh, and definitely something that hearing your your long list of groups you work with is something I wondered. How do you manage so many different projects without burning out, especially ones that deal with heavy topics? Mm. So, I mean, I think the heavy topics we encounter, <laughs> you know, at least in, in, you know, every time I walk out of my home and even in my home, right? Like those are, those are things that I'm thinking about um, as, a, as a brown cis male, right? Like those are a lot of things that are, that I'm subjected to, whether, whether I want to deal with them or not. Um, and even in the communities that I work in, um, those are, those are uh, things that are being talked about, right? Like maybe not necessarily in, in, in a very open way, um, but definitely being discussed. Um, I mean, the, the reason for the collectives is also because the people that I'm working with bring me joy. Right. Um, they're yes, you're right. You know, they're they're very heavy uh, topics and themes, right? And like, you know, so systemic oppression and systemic racism is very real, and and you know, it's very um, hard to engage in those conversations. But I think when you're doing it in a space where people are critical and people are loving, um, it makes it a lot easier for us to imagine different systems that don't rely on on um, oppressing others. Um, so that's one, and that's actually one of the biggest reasons why, um, you know, I was, um, you know, I wanted to be part of the Chicago Art Collective. That's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm part of the Mobilized Creative Collaborative. And one of the reasons why I was uh, excited to join um, the Just Seeds uh, artist cooperative, right? Because I wanted to to learn from others that are doing this work, and how do we take care of each other? How do we take care of ourselves? How do we engage in a struggle, you know, but center joy um, and reciprocity, you know, and 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 thinking about how much are we taking, and making sure that we're giving back as much as we take. All right. Well, uh, we're getting close to time. I think we might have a couple more mm-hmm. questions for you, if uh, if you're ready. Um, yeah. So you've worked with an awful lot of different uh, uh, groups. Is there any group in particular that you didn't anticipate working with, or maybe uh, wasn't on your radar? And and how did that turn out for you? Yeah. I mean, I mean, all of the. Well, the when when you say groups, are you talking about the collectives themselves or organizations that I have collaborated with? Whichever you, know, you think is a more interesting answer, William. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to hear <laughs> okay. what you have to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think definitely. So I'll focus on the organizations, right? Um, there's definitely a lot of organizations that have reached out that I didn't know existed. I knew of their work, but I didn't know that that organization was the organization that did all the organizing, right? So um, so I'm trying to think, um, let's see if I remember their, their name. I'm actually gonna do a really quick search to make sure that I don't mess up their name. Um, but I wanna see, it's like the Asian Americans for social, um, Let's see, Asian Americans, like uh, Asian Americans, uh, Asian Americans advancing justice. There it goes. 
you know, they're like a national organization. There's a chapter here in Chicago. Um, you know, just last year, they reached out about doing um, a printmaking workshop as part of their uh, kinetic um, gallery exhibition that is uh, geared, it was, you know, high school students that ended up generating posters and images around social justice. And I was a big fan of their work. I just didn't know that I was a big fan of their work because I hadn't uh, made the connection between the work that they were generating and all the organizing and activism that they have been doing for, you know, decades um, because I didn't know their, their name, right? So it was just um, um, a really great way to organize that and, and really have those conversations. And then the last one that I'll mention before, you know, I know folks uh, have to leave, um, but the other one is also the Chicago Cultural Alliance, right? Right now I'm, I'm doing some work with the Chicago Cultural Alliance and all its members on, you know, generating public programming and curriculum on how to teach uh, the content of the cultural organizations to uh, elementary age uh, students. So through that work, I've been able to um, learn a lot about the cultural organizations that exist in Chicago, which there's a lot of them. Uh, and they're kind of embedded in different neighborhoods across the different, you know, the, the 77 different neighborhoods that exist in Chicago and in, in the Chicago land area. So, you know, getting to talk to people, getting to talk about their uh programming, their, the work that they're attempting to do has been really, really amazing. Um, and I think it's one of the things that, you know, it's the conversations with people that bring me a lot of joy. Um, and that's why I continue to do the work, you know, and, and I go camping, you know, camping is also very important. So I can like de-stress and get away for a little bit. That sounds pretty healthy to me. <laughs> uh, well, I think we're about up on time. William, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I love watching your process. I, I love the behind the scenes look. I really think it helps uh, a lot of us that are newer to the art form to see it in motion, uh, to really understand how it works. And I, I love seeing you make your your, your uh, poster. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, oh, thank, thank you everyone you. for coming. Uh, Carol, I think you might have some information about an upcoming Meet the Maker program in 2021. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it back to you. But again, thank you so much for being here, William. Yes, thank you, Chris and William. And uh, yes, we have two more Meet the Maker programs lined up in January 2021. And I'm going to put everything in chat and you will be receiving a follow up email from us. Um, one is the, oops, sorry. <laughs> one is uh, uh, with Team Harrison on January 7th, and the other one is on January 25th. Um, both of them are in evening. Um, the second one is with Julie Kittrich. Uh, she is a local Arlington Heights based ceram ceramic artist. So uh, very different style. And if any of you missed our previous segments in the series, feel free to uh, visit our website um, and select a specific maker and you will find a recording on the website. So with that, thank you very much uh, everyone for joining tonight and I, Hope everybody have a safe and a wonderful holiday season. Thank you, good night. Thank you everyone. Send me your poster designs. <laughs>